We are mere days away from the official start to the 2024 college football season. And Baton Rouge and the extended Tiger Nation are absolutely abuzz with anticipation for kickoff Sunday at 6.30 p.m. Central as LSU faces off against the USC Trojans in Las Vegas. That means it's time for a little pregame rap session here on the podcast. And for that, we'll be bringing on a new voice, Glenn Gilbo who just signed on as Tiger Rag Magazine editor, will be headed to Las Vegas to cover the event. In between packing his bags and sorting out a rental car, Glenn sits down with Jeff Palermo and Todd Horn to discuss the upcoming game and gather their thoughts on what fans can expect this weekend. You'll want to stay tuned through the end. After discussing the teams, coaches, and players and sharing their predictions, Jeff takes Todd to task on his perhaps overly optimistic view of the current Tigers defense. Pretty good stuff. I'm your host, Jake McMains, and all that and more after a word from our sponsors. Hi, I'm Mike Munnellin, and we're here to smash the capital city's trash. Smash My Trash is a revolutionary compactor for large dumpsters, sometimes reducing the volume of waste by up to 70%. This means fewer hauls per month and big savings for your business. Fewer hauls and compacted waste will also result in a positive impact on our community and our environment by taking up less space in our local landfill sites. Schedule your company's free demo today. Call 225-497-0101. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yeah. Let's go. Come on. Tiger Rag Radio is on the air. Let's, let's crank this thing up. We're statewide, breaking down the latest happenings with LSU Athletics. This is us. Hear from the coaches. We're put together a defense that puts us in a position to win the SEC. The players. Having fun and we working, baby. That's it, man. The recruits. Yeah, show some passion and some heart. And those who cover the fighting tigers of LSU and the SEC. All those things are going to be there, which are important. It's two hours of nonstop LSU talk. What a privilege. I mean, you get to represent LSU. Tiger Rag Radio is brought to you by Cummins. Cummins creates power solutions that the world depends on. Helm Paint and Decorating. The paint experts of Louisiana. Louisiana Beef Industry Council. Max Home. And the East Baton Rouge Parish Library. Get ready to talk Tigers with producer Jackson Blackman and our hosts, Todd Horn and Jeff Palermo. Three great players that are better people than they are players. This is Tiger Rag Radio. Well, it's going to be, it's going to be cool just seeing LSU in, in Las Vegas in, a, in an NFL stadium against a, you know, a big-time brand, ranked opponent, uh, the only game of the day in college, or the only significant game of the day in, they're in college. They're projecting 10 million viewers yeah. on Sunday night. Prime time, Sunday night. Uh, it's going to be exciting. I think, um, you know, it was Will Campbell had a great interview on Tuesday uh, with, with the media, and, and he was talking about how we're, we're, we're going to run the ball. I'll just come out and say it. That's all we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to run the ball. I mean, he made it. Made it very simple. And, you know, like I said, we're going to run the ball. So, I mean, that's not something we're hiding or, you know, trying to keep quiet. I'm telling everybody right now we are going to run the football. So you can take what you want with that. And then Matt Flynn said on the radio this morning, sounds like a guy who's going to play for an offense that's going to throw it every down. <laughs> but, uh, no, it, it's, it's going to be fun to see. I, I mean, I think they're going to run, too. It's, it's going to be fun to see them try to establish the game plan kind of old school, you know, and, and, uh, and then using Garrett here and there. But, uh, you know, I, it's going to be fun to see if that run game, if they really stick to it, sets up a, a passing game because the quarterback has an advantage when they, when, he's, when they are running most of the time. Yeah, and, you know, they did spend all of spring and all of fall camp and I'm, I'm sure most of the last few days of practice getting ready for USC – Re- totally revamping that run game to incorporate more than just inside zone reads. They're pulling the tackles. They're running slants. They're running all types of different push-pull uh, concepts. They definitely want to run. And, and I want to go back to a, a, a point. Last year, if you'll remember, whenever that wild LSU uh, Ole Miss game in Oxford where uh, you know, we – We've talked about it recently where LSU could not stop Ole Miss 
even though they were up by two scores with, what, nine minutes to play in the game, ended up losing 55-49. to 49. It was a very entertaining game. It was like a basketball game. Yeah, and it was it was like an arcade game even almost. But after the game, Kelly's like, well, I hope you enjoyed that. That's not the kind of football I like. Obviously a very difficult loss. Uh, you know, angry, disappointed. I can see all the adjectives. Um, but, uh, you know, if you like a lot of points, I guess you like the game. I didn't like it um, particularly. Not the way I like to play football. And he wasn't just talking about the, the the poor defense on both sides of the ball from Ole Miss and LSU. He was talking about the fact that that's not the way he likes to play. Kelly likes to have a big, strong offensive line. And LSU's offensive line, I thought this was interesting, outweighs USC's defensive line by 45 pounds on average. Wow. And they're three inches taller. So that's a ch- huge size advantage. And, of course, you know, LSU with Will Campbell and Emory, Emory uh, Thomas have the two projected best offensive tackles. Emory or, Jones. Emory, Emory Jones. Jones. What did I say, Emory Thomas? Yeah. Emory Jones have the two best offensive tackles uh, in the country. Did they just get Emory Thomas off the portal? Or was it, uh, yeah, th- yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, because yeah. yeah, I know that works quick. Speaking of the portal – USC has more portal players than anybody but Lane Kiffin <laughs> at Ole Miss anyway. But but I think what we're going to see is we're going to see that in Kelly's third year with a matured offensive line, with a powerful offensive line, that they are going to be dedicated to the run like Campbell was saying last night. So I, I want to take a look at it from the defensive side because I think LSU offensively will be just fine, right? I think uh, Nussmeyer, as long as he able to, you know, not turn it over multiple times uh, as long as LSU stays away from turnovers, penalties. I think they're going to score their fair share of points. But the key is, will LSU somehow slow down USC offensively? Can they? Brian Kelly in his, I don't know how long that press conference was on Monday, I think that the most important thing he said, and he he just kind of said it off the cuff. I don't want to say off the cuff, but he just was talking. He says, we got to make them one-dimensional. Lincoln Riley is an outstanding football coach. You know, his pedigree in terms of winning at at Oklahoma and, again, at USC has been through the offense. Um, And, you know, we've got to do a great job, obviously, in in making them – you know, one-dimensional. Um, you know, they, they are – if they are balanced offensively, they are very difficult to defend. And what I think he wants to do in this game is stop USC from running the ball. Go back to the USC-UCLA game a year ago. Bruins held USC to three yards rushing. You go back to the Oregon-USC game last year, USC was held to 73 yards rushing. Only scored 27 points. I'm saying only because if, if LSU is able to hold USC to less than four touchdowns, I think they win this game because I think LSU is going to score four touchdowns in this game. So that to me is what needs to happen for LSU to win this game. You know, if, if, if I was Lincoln Riley, I, I would not be that concerned with my USC running game. I would, I would focus more on the pass. And not really worry about that because that, that's where I think LSU is less weak against the run than they are against the pass. So I would, uh, I would, I would not really focus on the run too much if I was USC. So, I mean, I think he might come out throwing, throwing well, a lot. Well, he, you know, he's, he's from the Mike Leach school of, of the air raid and he, he runs the air raid. But the key to the running game for USC is that it sets up the rest of the offense, whereas LSU this year is going to have the ability to throw the ball. They're going to, have to be more balanced in throwing the ball, but they don't need to run to set up the pass. USC does. See, I don't think USC does need to run to set up the pass against LSU. They might against other teams. And um, I think LSU um, 
would be wise to not not run to set up the game to set up the pass, but just to run because they got maybe the best offensive line in the country, and I think they can really just dominate by by playing old school. But uh, if I'm if I'm Lincoln Riley, I'm 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 going to look at that secondary and try to take advantage of it quick. Yeah, but conceptually, the best way for him to do that is to have the threat of a run. Well, maybe with a new quarterback. Yeah, you're right. Well, no, but but just schematically the way the air raid works and and is going to be running that 353 defense well, too. Well, well did did Mike Leach set up the pass with the run in the no, 2020 no, but, opener? No, but no, he even, just ran a bunch of crossing passes. Yeah, right. I know, that's what I'm saying. LSU that's LSU what refu- I would do. Because LSU in that game in 2020 refused to to come out of the press man coverage. And so they were playing follow the leader all across the field all game long and and Go- State just ate it up. I think you're going up against a much more aggressive def- – you're going up against – you are going up against a much more aggressive defense that we saw in Bo Pelini in 2020 than what we saw with last year over the last season. So you're going to – I don't think Lincoln Riley wants to go out in this game and throw the ball around 50 times when and, and face all these exo- – I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be exotic, but all these different – Pressures. He's going to have to try to be a little bit more balanced. Yeah, he's probably licking his chops at LSU secondary and saying, I saw Ashton Stamps last year. I mean, the way the coaching staff is making him out this year, it's like he's the next Deion Sanders. I mean, he's not, I mean, he's a, he's a good player, but he's not a great player. Sage Ryan is a safety. He's not a quarterback. <laughs> I don't know, and I think we'll we'll find out more this year until we get Zion Alexander healthy, and then maybe Sage plays a different position or somebody else develops, or maybe P.J. I don't even know if P.J. Woodland is the, the answer there at corner. But, yeah, there's no doubt they're soft in the secondary. But I think Lincoln Riley also understands he's going up against a defensive coordinator that's going to try to create some chaos. So why don't we try to do something and be a little more let's, – let's try to be as balanced as we can in this game. How, how much zone do you think Blake Baker's going to play? A lot. Okay. Uh, not because he wants to, but because that's what's going to be necessitated to defend against Lincoln Riley's air raid. And so what's going to happen most of the time, I think, is you're going to have LSU in that 3-5-3 defense, which means Harold Perkins and, and probably Womack or – Somebody else are going to be on the other end, so it's going to look like they're playing defensive ends. It's like it's going to look like LSU has a five-man front with two stand-up rushers on the sides. So they're going to most of the time drop back into coverage. It's going to be a three deep. You're going to have Ryan, um, Sage Ryan at one cornerback, and you're going to have Ashton Stamps at the other cornerback, and you're going to start out with Jordan Gilbert at free safety, and they're going to be playing three deep, and they're going to have zone responsibilities to where. Uh, the, the air raid offense goes to flow. But that's why the run is going to be so important for USC, because if they don't have a run threat, if LSU's defensive line, as Kelly said, not just referring to the defensive line, but referring to the whole defense, can hold their ground and be where they're supposed to be, then that defensive line is going to be able to plug up most of those run gaps and fit that run with just three defensive linemen with the linebackers making a quick read and being able to fill in. If LSU successfully stops USC's run game, and as you said, Glenn and Jeff earlier, if LSU's offensive line is able to overpower continually USC's defensive line and establish that run game, this game is going to be over quick. Well, not I, I not think, quick like a Jaden Daniels quick. Quick like it's just going to be zapping USC's energy all all day long. Well, I, I think I think it's something we haven't discussed is that that will be really key in um, stopping USC's pass game, regardless of the run. Is uh, the pressure LSU puts on the new USC quarterback? Yeah, uh, you know, so if he doesn't have any time to throw, and and uh, like like I said uh, last night on the Tiger Rag Radio. If I'm Blake Baker, you know, you're not that good in the secondary anyway, so you might as well blitz a lot. Yeah, but but it's like Jeff said. It's like when you blitz a lot, and, and Kelly said this multiple times during camp, we are not going to be good at natural pressures. I mean, he didn't say it. I'm paraphrasing. 
But what I took from it was we're not going to be good at natural pressures. We're going to have to create those manufacture right. pressure. And so when you do that, that means that Harold Perkins is supposed to be dropping back into coverage or is the way the defense is designed, but because they're manufacturing a, a pressure, he's going to blitz then. Well, it's going to leave the back out of the backfield wide open you know, out in the flats on, the, on whatever side Harold Perkins is coming from, for example. To Jeff's point, you're going to get burnt if you don't if you don't make the pressure, make the tackle, make the blitz work. So you can't do it every play. And you might get burned even when you're not blitzing. Well, the only way you get burned when you're not blitzing is if your players aren't making the right reads and the right coverage or if they're immobilized and not doing something. Well, they're something. not that talented. I think LSU's got – I said this all last year, Jeff, and you'll remember it. I, I was like, you know, the defense can't be that bad. They, they've – this is a major college. They they're recruiting. They may not have the you know the NFL uh, players in the at DBU in the backfield, but they still have talent. But LSU didn't live up to its talent last year, and I think that's because the coaches weren't getting enough out of them. And the players really disliked the coaches right, exactly. last year on defense. Right, so and, that's, and, and it was that's a, a big deal. The whole season turned yeah. into a spiral. Yeah, both USC and LSU on defense know they sucked last year. They both have chips on their shoulder. I think LSU has enough talent on defense to be in the right place, as Kelly says. And as Glenn, you said in your article on Tiger Rag yesterday, uh, it's just not that hard. Just you know, Kelly says it's just not that hard to do it. And I think that's what the key to the game is going to be. LSU might need to leave, it, leave its chips in the casino. <laughs> <laughs> Are you buying what Brian Kelly's been saying? There's been less – coverage breakdowns and all this. I, I, I'm not buying it because I look at a practice as a just a control. I mean, the coaches are literally on the field with the players. I'll tell you what. I, and so I, I just don't buy I got to see it to believe and it. And even if there aren't breakdowns, like he said, it's still practice. It's still practice. It, it is practice, but – I'll give LSU's defense this, and I want to reference what Matt Moscona said because I believe that. I saw it myself, and I thought he verbalized it really well. LSU's got good offense, so whenever their LSU's offense is going against that defense in 11-on-11, they're, they're, they've got their hands full, not just on the offensive line, but with those receivers and the running backs. So they're getting to practice against the best of the best. What I think that Moscona said early in camp – uh, as LSU donned the pads for the first time, uh, he said, you know, when you watch the defensive players in drills go against the offense, when, they, when it's one-on-one -on -one drills or even, uh, you know, seven-on-seven -seven at times, they're getting beat. But when you put, put it in 11-on-11, LSU's defense becomes more competitive because they're in the right place at the right time and they're taking up for it. And that's the advantage that LSU's defense is going to have against USC's offense, USC's offensive line is is a question mark. They have uh, their best player, who was an offensive tackle last year, left tackle last year, is now playing the center. Their left tackle is a freshman, and their right tackle, they don't even – most of the people at, in Los Angeles don't even know why he's starting because he's had such a questionable checkered past. So – LSU's defense has some opportunity here. They do what they're supposed to do. They're in the right place at the right time, and they have the right talent, and I think they have a better coach, better coaching staff. Can we talk special teams? What, what, what do you want to talk about in special teams? That, who's going to punt? Who's I, mean, gonna... I think that's a, a big question mark going into the season, and you're going up against one of the premier return men in college football in – Zachariah Branch. Now, yeah. I could see a situation where LSU just doesn't punt to him. Well, yeah, I could see they just hope they punt like a, a thirty yarder and hope it bounces for about another ten yards, and and they hope that's what happens. You know, I watched uh, Ocean Dorf uh, at, at practice one day. He booted like three consecutive punts out of bounds, and I was thinking it was, it was he was. Struggling. I think he was practicing. I think that's what they're going to be doing. I don't think they're, they're going to let that kid touch the ball. 
And it, I think if if Pate and Todd or a, or the Oceandorf, if they do punt it to him, I think that's it. I think they're not going to punt anymore. Okay. I really believe so that. So that sounds that. We have nothing to worry about with specialty. Well, we have something to worry about if they don't execute. But I, I, I think he would be just dumb to punt to him. Okay. We have just seen two years of – Questionable play by the special teams, right? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. And you still don't have a special teams coordinator. I, I, this is another thing I'm just not buying. I'm just, uh, I, I'm not buying, and, and I, I'm not buying the fact that they're going to be solid on that on that side again. Now, Xavier Thomas certainly is a, is an upgrade. Damian Ramos has been consistent. Uh, I think they're going to miss. A Jay Bramlett this year, right? Um, and then you know, kickoff returns. I mean, some teams kick them. And well, we'll see. But it's just been. It was uh, at least it wasn't a a complete breakdown last year like we saw in twenty twenty two. But it's not like LSU was under Greg McMahon when he was a special team. I know it's it's been it's been a serious lacking. But I think I th- I think they you know like we said they won't punt. To USC, they'll punt it out of bounds or punt it away from them. I think Xavion uh, Thomas is going to be a good punt returner for LSU, and I think he and Aaron Anderson will be returning kickoffs. Or Caleb Jackson, mm-hmm. yeah, as well. Although I don't think you're going to want him returning kicks as much um, this year because of how much he's going to have to be playing on the, in the backfield. But I think I think special teams is always a question mark yeah. right now, and we'll we'll just have to see. Um, Let's let's go ahead and you know revisit our predictions. Yeah. See if we've changed them any, and then let's wrap this up so we can get back to work. And I think Kelly's press conference is starting pretty soon. So you want me to go first? Why not? Okay. Um, I still feel I think this is going to be a close game uh, Sunday night. I'll go with LSU. I just think they have. The ability to be more balanced than USC in this game, based on LSU's offensive line, I think Nussmeyer will do. He'll do fine. I don't think it's going to be a you know, four or five touchdown passing performance, uh, but I think he's going to do fine in this game. Maybe a couple touchdown passes. Wouldn't be surprised if there's an interception in there. Um, and as long as LSU stays away from penalties and turnovers, they should win this game. I'll go like 33-27, something like that. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to stick with mine uh, in the um, Tiger Rag issue coming up. Uh, LSU is going to win 38-14. I think Blake Baker is just going to steal the show in his uh, opener as LSU's defensive coordinator. I, I think he's going to stymie. USC's offense and, and Lincoln Riley, and I think um, LSU's offensive line will dominate the game with, with the running game, and they'll uh, pass here and there with Nussmeyer. All right, so I've predicted that LSU is going to win 42 to 39, all right, which will be over the, over the uh, under over in terms of points because it's at like 63 and a half or 64 like we talked about earlier. But, but I'm conflicted. Because if LSU does what they want to do on offense, they're gonna they're they're gonna just rip the soul out of USC and pull away in the second half. But I still think there's gonna be some lapses. There's gonna be some turnovers, perhaps. And I think USC is still gonna experience a modicum of success offensively against LSU's defense. Even though I think you're gonna see a, a much improved defense. So I still I'm gonna stick with 42-39. But I wouldn't be surprised. If it's uh, maybe even thirteen or fourteen points difference at the end, LSU went by two touchdowns. It, I, I still think it's going to be. I'm going to err on the side of caution with that and still say it's going to be a closer game. But yeah, LSU either way. I bet if you watched the spring game again, you you, you would. Because uh... what did <laughs> what did I say coming out of the spring game? What did I say? Go ahead. You, you can you quote. Were, you were, just flabbergasted at how bad they were. <laughs> and here's the thing: this, I was actually thinking about this on my on my, my way into work today. I, I mean, we heard last year about how good the defense was going to be. 
And what did we see in the, obviously, Florida State torch stuff? And then even go back to the bowl game in Wisconsin. There was all this talk, man, the defense is coming around, a, you know, a whole month, and they were awful, awful against one of the worst offenses in college football. Uh, and, and that was the second-string offense for the most part. <laughs> and then we, we heard how great in the spring game that – or in spring, hey, defense coming around, this and the P.J. Woodland, look at this. This guy is the next champ, Bailey. And they were awful. They were <laughs> awful. And now we're, don't get sucked in, Todd. Don't get sucked in. But I've seen the defense uh, in dumb. the fall be I, more competitive. I just need to and the see whole it. has looked better than the sum of the parts. I just need so, to see it in a game. I, I, and, and I have no problem coming back here next week saying, man, that defense looked good. Yeah. Oh, I know. I, he is a, he I, is a unbelievable defensive coordinator. But I have a feeling – there will there will be a lot that the problem always going in these season openers. It's been a month of just rainbows and flowers. No, right? you're, you're right. You're right. And you just and and it's so hard as a media member because you, you've just been dr- nobody's had a bad camp. There is not one guy on that eighty four man. If I think it's eighty four scholarship players, not one guy that as far as those eighty four scholarship players had a bad camp. You know why they have only one injury that's a concern going into this game? Which is Chris Hilton, which we hadn't talked about. You know why there's only one injury? Because they've been playing two-hand touch for the last four weeks. That's Uh, true. I told you last night. They don't tackle in practice anymore. (laughs) There's a reason why they're healthy going into this game. Well, but, you know, now that you brought up I'm having a PTSD (laughs) episode because that's spring. I was was livid. (laughs) I was livid. I was telling Jeff, that sucks. They're horrible. This is pathetic. And they were, but they have looked better in the fall, and I do believe they were playing vanilla in spring. Yeah. So okay. I'm rationalizing. All right. But just flip it on for a little bit on Saturday <laughs> at 1 o'clock, would you? <laughs> All right, guys. All right, Wait, so we do we have any do USC? We have yeah, do we, he already come okay, in. He okay, already, okay. Yeah, it was about 10 minutes ago before you <laughs> ran. <laughs> Good right, God. Guys. So do we have the USC fight song? And it's Cardinal and Go. Cardinal and Go. I still think it's more of a maroon. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, go Tigers, Gwen. Go cover Kelly. And let's get started. Join the East Baton Rouge Parish Library for inspiring events in August. Celebrate the power of storytelling with a presentation by the accomplished author of the Jaipur trilogy, Alka Joshi. Listen to fascinating stories based on DNA and genetic genealogy at our Decoding Stories Symposium. And learn about the history of Baton Rouge with photographs from the library's digital archive. Visit ebrpl.com for information on these programs and many more. Get inspired in August. All right, that'll be it for today's episode. Thanks to Jeff, Todd, and Glenn for the discussion. We'll be back later this week, but until then, stay tuned to TigerRag.com for all your latest LSU sports news.